Every day, families face the difficult scenario of deciding what to do when a loved one passes away, whether it's preserving personal items or even organ donation. But what if your loved one's dying wish to donate their organs turns into a phone call about transplanting an animal's genetically modified organ into them? A bizarre but potentially groundbreaking proposal. Our Alex Perche brings us the story of the Parsons family and the journey they decided to embark on. Ask around about Jim Parsons. His loved ones will tell you he never met a stranger. Now, his medical contributions will potentially help tens of thousands of people he'll never meet. Yeah, I know he'd be very proud of what, of, of what he's accomplished. Jim is the reason doctors are making a major breakthrough in fighting a huge crisis, a kidney shortage. It seems like he loved being on bikes. I mean, he loved racing. That was uh, where he spent every minute he possibly could to be on a dirt bike or a street bike. Our first date was on a bike. <laughs> That's Jim's ex-wife, Julie, his sons, Cole and David, his daughter, Allie, and all his kids ride. I never see a smile as big as whenever he sees me riding a bike. Sometimes he'd even race along with his children. This was the case in September of last year. He and David were competing in different heats. I actually crashed and messed up my bike during that race. And as I was going, taking my motorcycle to the trailer, I saw a helicopter landing in the woods. And I was like, well, somebody's hurt. And, uh, and then I waited until the race was over and dad never came back. Anxiety starting to set in. Then uh, somebody came up to me and said, your dad's hurt out in the field. So I went over there and um, they were doing CPR on him uh, next to the helicopter. The 57-year-old would be declared brain dead, his family grieving and still trying to take next steps. Jim was an organ donor, but doctors deemed him not suitable for donation, which opened the door for a unique opportunity. Doctors at the University of Alabama, Birmingham, were poised to conduct the first transplant of a genetically modified pig kidney into a human. The process is called xenotransplantation. And the whole family agreed that, yes, uh, we wanted Jim to be a part of this uh, amazing study. And just like that, Jim became their donor. The process is incredibly complicated. With Jim's body on a ventilator, researchers essentially removed his kidneys and replaced them with ones from a gene-edited pig. The first time this has ever been done. These are organs coming from a pig, but there's a very specific reason why, why you've chosen this animal. Absolutely. You know, pigs have a lifespan of around 30 years. So the idea is when you transplant these organs that they will be able to sustain the life of the human for the remainder of their life. The pig was gene edited to lessen the risk that a human body would reject the organ. It also allows the organs to properly fit inside a body. The transplant itself, um, we sewed in both kidneys. That took about four hours, about two hours for each kidney. And then the remainder of the procedure was following him post-transplant. The new pig kidneys viable for 77 hours before doctors ended the study, which was then peer-reviewed. Its success potentially paving the way for these kinds of transplants inside living humans, saving lives. Currently, there are more than 90,000 people in need of a new kidney, but doctors say fewer than 25,000 transplants are performed each year. There is nothing worse than having to see a patient in clinic, knowing that I have a cure for their disease and knowing that there's not enough to go around and that they might die before I can give them that cure. This seems like it could really potentially fill the gap there. Uh, without question, our organ shortage is truly a crisis. And so the concept of being able to quite literally have an organ available when someone needs it is the type of radical solution that we've needed for a long time in transplantation. The study's not without critics. Some animal rights advocates are concerned with the use of pigs. I mean, we have been trying to overcome the organ shortage for more than 30 years with human organs, and we're just not able to do it. And I think alternative sources like xenotransplantation are really necessary. Dr. Locke pointing not just to UAB's work, but also a recent heart xenotransplantation, saying that studies on lungs and liver could be next. So many scientists who have dedicated their lives to this field to get us where we are today, and I am so very hopeful for our patients. As for Jim Parsons' family, knowing his life's legacy will help save others, 
means the world. There's no words to describe how awesome it is to know that my dad was a part in saving 100,000 plus people. That's a heck of a legacy. Yes, very much so. And I, I know Jim's very proud of it. Uh, he'd, he'd probably say, you know, stop talking about me so much now. But <laughs> <laughs> um, yeah, I know he'd be very proud of what he's accomplished. And Lindsay, tonight, doctors at UAB are crediting the work being done all around the world in the field of genetically modified animal organs. And that UAB team is optimistic that they will successfully transplant a genetically modified pig kidney into a living human by the end of this year. Alex, the implications here are just fascinating. What this could mean, and, and so grateful for Jim Parsons and, and his family for, for what a legacy, it. right? In fact, that is. True. Thank you so much, Alex. We appreciate it. Hi, everyone. George Stephanopoulos here. Thanks for checking out the ABC News YouTube channel. If you'd like to get more videos, show highlights, and watch live event coverage, click on the right over here to subscribe to our channel. And don't forget to download the ABC News app for breaking news alerts. Thanks for watching.